Because have you noticed men struggling to keep up their friendships with each other during the pandemic? A Washington Post article found since the closures begin, male friendships are suffering more than female friendships. So, Milt, why don't you start us off? Have you noticed this? Well, I have. And, I mean, unfortunately, I haven't struggled. My good friends are friends I've been friends with for years since I was young. I mean, my two college roommates, I went to elementary school with them. And the gentlemen, the friends who I've met since I've lived in Atlanta, uh, these are guys who usually don't talk about sports. And that's where the problems come about. Most men, their conversations are surface. You know, they want to talk about sports. And if they do talk about their families or, or their kids or wives or significant others, they don't get too deep. They like to keep things on the surface. But now that these men can't get together, they can't go to their bars or maybe they can't hang out in their, in their, in their, you know, their man caves. They can't have those surface conversations. And now we spend a lot of time with our wives and our wives want to get deep. They want to dig beneath the surface, and that's difficult for a lot of men to do. So it's testing a lot of men as far as what they can do, how deep they can get with conversations, but it's going to be a difficult task. Like I said, fortunately, my friends, I've been friends with them for years, and very rarely do we talk about sports because we've been friends so long. So I've been fortunate that I haven't had to deal with those difficult conversations. Nate, yeah, what about I'm, you? I'm yeah, absolutely. I, uh, on our side, it's uh, I feel fortunate. Um, a lot of my a lot of my friendships with you know my my closest friends. We've been sort of socially distanced for a while because I've been in Ottawa since university. They've most of them have congregated to Toronto and around that that sort of mecca there. So our conversations have had to be uh, you know a little a little a little more virtual. Whether it's over the phone, you know, one guy's hungover on his waiting for his Uber <laughs> to show up, and he gives he gives you a call for forty five minutes. You catch up on all things relationship, fun, what what he did this last week. But I would say the ones that have sort of suffered the most are sort of outside of that first ring. You know, if you think of it like a bullseye outside of that red zone, it's those ones that maybe you only see when it's when you're going to the bar, you're going to, you're going to watch the sports and stuff like that because those events just aren't popping up. Uh, you don't really have the ability to 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 chop it up with them and. You know, it's. I think that brings some things to light about what the nature of that relationship was. But I also think that people are just kind of understanding that it's weird. I feel like as soon as a bar is back open, mm -hmm. those friendships will just pick back up. It's not going to be like a hey, you, you haven't you haven't called me in six months, but he's like, well, the pandemic hasn't called you actually. I I've been where I usually am. You've been where you usually are. So it's <laughs> it's. I feel fortunate, but it's uh, it's been it's been tough. Right. <laughs> yeah. You I hear you, Nate and Mel. Um, it's interesting, you know, just even talking to some of my male friends, how it's it's just so tough for them to have real conversations when you're you're not there in person. But it's really funny, though, how I find that I'm able to do a virtual whiskey night with some of my male friends, but yet they just refuse to do a virtual whiskey night with each other. So I wonder why that is. But here's the interesting part. You know, a lot of people think think us girls want to just um, get together and talk and have fashion talk and all of this. But listen, uh, I like to get together with my girls so we can do some trash talking of our spouses, our partners, and talk about how terrible this has been with our kids in the house. But here's the truth, you know, men and women, when it comes to that type of connection, I still miss that as well. I want to be in a restaurant with my girlfriends and have those conversations because let me tell you, I was just the other day telling one of my girlfriends how my nine-year-old has just, you know, has having some attitude issues and she heard and she heard the whole conversation and I had a price to pay. So even women, we are even more reserved when it comes to having yeah. real conversations from home because I think even we, like, we just all need to get out of this house. I have to admit that when I read this story, it kind of made me sad because I, I, the men in my life, they're, they're pretty uh, easy at, at opening up and saying, I love you to each other and mm -hmm. to men, women, it doesn't matter. And it made me sad that some of these men, you know, were tiptoeing about opening up, about having deeper conversations because they feared that I guess their male friends would sort of be maybe judging them for being quote unquote too feminine. And then when they did it, they found that they sort of opened up this vault and everyone else started doing it too. And I thought that was really huh. beautiful in a way. Like they were almost waiting for someone to do it mm -hmm. first. And then someone yeah. did it first. And yeah. that's yeah. lovely. That's yeah. a silver lining. Yes. Yeah. Taking that initiative. Absolutely. Absolutely.